Well, we're going to meet the new boss tomorrow for the Hornets, but you know, he is the same as the old boss. Hornets coach twice removed Steve Clifford rehired Friday night as the Hornets coaching search two months long not only takes a left hand turn, but reverses course. So bringing it, uh, bringing in to talk about it, we're going to bring in Walker Mill from Lockdown Hornets. Walker, I know you were like out of town for a wedding. I'm sure yeah. you were tracking this. What were your initial thoughts? Uh, one that I was dreaming too, that somehow went back to 2013 when I saw that press release and then how this all was just so disorganized, how this could not have been a part of the original plan for the Charlotte Hornets once they went to Kenny Atkinson and then all signs were pointing towards them finally getting Mike D'Antoni, who is the number one choice for for a lot of Charlotte Hornets fans, including myself, and then eventually Mitch Kupchak telling us we should be ready for a curveball, and this was it. Steve Clifford, the guy that was fired in order to bring James Borrego on, is now hired because time is a flat circle and he is a Charlotte Hornet coach again. Uh, really confusing to see how all of this unfolded over the last couple of months. It's not often, Walker, that you hire a coach that is only 12 wins away from being the winningest coach in franchise history, but that's what's happened here. We know Steve Clifford brings defense, uh, rebounding, low turnover rate, but you know, not pace. And Mitch Kupchak said in his statement Friday, and I think that was purposeful, that Steve Clifford has committed to playing with the same pace we're accustomed to. The Hornets were sixth in offensive pace last year. How do you see that actually taking place? Well, we don't know how Steve Clifford will coach that side or that end of the court. Just because when we saw Steve Clifford here with Charlotte the first go around, a lot of it was predicated on low turnovers, taking care of the basketball. They would take the right kind of shots, but ultimately they were towards the bottom in the league as far as the amount of pace they played with. We finally got there. It took a couple of years for Borrego to get there, and LaMelo Ball is going to help the pace of any team he plays for. So hopefully that is the same here with Steve Clifford as the head coach. But Nick, the thing to watch here is defense. The Hornets have struggled mightily defensively over the last few seasons. Borrego, I would imagine, would argue the fact that he never had a rim protector, never had a defensive big guy. Well, they addressed that in the draft, getting Mark Williams at 15th overall. We'll see how much he plays immediately, but that's what Steve Clifford is very good at. That's what he's been respected for as an assistant coach for a long time. Can he get these guys to defend and get towards the top of the league on that end of the floor. I think that that's what I'm going to be most interested in seeing. Yeah, the secondary question surrounding any coaching candidate that was ever talked about was how would this affect LaMelo Ball? And with Mike D'Antoni, it was very clear this would probably have a positive effect on his offense. How does it jive with Steve Clifford? It's tough. I I'm a little worried defensively because Steve Clifford will play you if you give 100% effort and you're just flat out good defensively. Well, Lamelo is a little undisciplined. He was a two year player now that was always going for that extra steal. Maybe not staying in the spot he was supposed to, but some of that would allow for some easy transition buckets. The thing is when he would gamble on a pass and then not get it, it would lead towards five on four basketball with the Charlotte Hornets being undermanned. And I think there's going to have to be a lot more disciplined. The good news is LaMelo does want to get better. Anybody that's ever been around this guy has talked about how coachable he is and how this is someone who wants to exhaust every opportunity to be a better basketball player. Steve Clifford loves those guys. So I think that's one that's one part of the relationship that's going to be very good this year and beyond. Who knows how long Steve Clifford will be that head coach, but there are some of the defensive issues for LaMelo Ball right now that might have Steve Clifford maybe go towards a different player here and there, maybe lead to problems behind the scenes. I don't know, but those are a couple of the questions I have regarding that relationship. Yeah, coming off an all-star year, as we see right there, nearing hopefully an all-star candidacy is Miles Bridges. Will it be with the purple and teal, the Charlotte Hornets? He's in restricted free agency. He erased uh, Charlotte Hornets from his Instagram profile over oh, no. the weekend. I know everybody's <laughs> freaking out about that. That just seems par for the course in NBA free agency at this point. Just got something you have to do, right? Uh, but are you worried at all that Miles Bridges is not going to be a Charlotte Hornet next year? Yeah, I have some worry, but for the most part, I think Miles Bridges does end up back with the Charlotte Hornets. I just think that after everything that's taken place this offseason, don't you want stability? Don't you want to bring back a guy who was your second best player behind LaMelo Ball last year? There are some people that would argue Miles was first, and he was a borderline all-star. This guy was in contention, at least, for most improved player of the year, and I don't think his ceiling has been reached yet. I think he can shoot better from three. I think he can get better on the 
defensive end. And I actually think Miles Bridges and Steve Clifford are going to mesh well with Miles Bridges, oddly enough, also being the longest tenured Hornet, <laughs> even with Gordon Hayward and Terry Rozier on the roster. It's so weird, but I do think he's going to end up with Charlotte once again, despite the rumored interest from Detroit, maybe even Portland once upon a time. In the end, I do think he puts back on the purple and teal. Yeah, it just doesn't seem like there's enough out there about another team willing to give Miles Bridges the money that the Hornets would not match at this point. Walker, I think a lot of us kind of maybe even oversold it a little bit heading into draft night. Draft night was a night we thought a transformational move could happen, perhaps getting a big name veteran in, perhaps getting rid of a big contract off the books, but it didn't. I think that was part of the disappointment. Do you think there could be some big move that is still looming from Mitch Kupchak and the Hornets? Yeah, I think they're still going to look to shed that Gordon Hayward salary and maybe even Terry Rozier, who also continues to be very interesting to monitor over this offseason. I don't know if they're able to shed Gordon Hayward's salary. Will they bring back a veteran center to help Mark Williams along the way? One thing about Steve Clifford is he has the reputation of not necessarily wanting to play those younger players, Mark Williams being a first year guy despite him serving a very defensive purpose maybe Steve Clifford feels more comfortable with a veteran but I do think that this is going to be an offseason where you have a couple of tweaks there's the potential for something else big happening more so than just the Jalen Duran trade that happened on draft night really getting that Denver Nuggets future pick in return yeah let's get into that trade because fans underwhelmed especially when we thought it was you know the 2025 pick from the Bucks a little better as next year's first rounder still from the Denver Nuggets so we'll see how good the pick is plus you know a, a packageable amount of second round picks I know you like Duran and Williams yeah. I think in that order that's clearly right. that's probably the order they were gonna like them in because they're they're just getting more in their minds for that 13th overall pick but uh, what did you think of the trade? What do you think with the Hornets come out of it with with Mark Williams? OK, so I had a weekend to kind of digest <laughs> everything that took place and then calm myself down. I did not like the trade in real time. I still don't like it. I think Jalen Duran was a special player, hyper athlete, really good at passing the basketball, would have come in and fit immediately with this roster. I don't think trading Jalen Duran for that Denver Nuggets pick that is very much likely to be worse than the 21st overall pick it was in this NBA draft because they're getting guys back. Michael Porter Jr., Jamal Murray, they're supposed to be helping Nikola Jokic contend for the next five years or so. But I do think that this kind of fell towards the Charlotte Hornets plan. They said, hey, we like Mark Williams a lot. And if both of them are available, and somebody else wants Jalen Duran, as the Knicks were reportedly interested in, and then, of course, Detroit, who ends up pulling the trigger on this trade, then we can still settle for our guy at 15, get a lot of second-round picks, which Mitch Kupchak has used quite a bit during his tenure with Charlotte, even get a first, and we'll see what we can do in future trades with those assets. I don't like the trade. I tried to make some sense of the thinking with the Charlotte, Hornet, uh, Charlotte Hornets brass by doing this, but in the end, I do like the player they end up with in the end with Mark Williams. All right, Walker, I hope you enjoyed the downtime for the Charlotte Hornets offseason because that's over and it was quite busy and it could get <laughs> and it crazy. probably lasted a day. Yeah, and it, if yeah, the, it if could that get is, crazy you know, from here, yeah. but at least they have a head coach in place, even if it's the coach twice removed. Walker Mail from Locked On Hornets. You can catch them daily on Locked On Hornets with great podcasts about your favorite NBA team. Walker, thanks for being here today. Always a blast, Nick. Thanks again for having yeah. me.